Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of ABG News. My name is Olisi, the son of Nube. Uh, I'm here with uh, a video. You know that we also document human rights uh, issues because this channel is mainly for the rights of people, especially migrants, is also to uh, cover the African continent in, in as far as news is concerned. We also cover, we do documentaries, we also document African history, we also document uh, the lifestyle of Africans. And here we are going international, we are talking about the situation in Haiti uh, where according to Human Rights Watch, an international organization safeguarding human rights, uh, there has been an, a search in violence, uh, in violent abuses, uh, and they say that UN Security Council response should abhor it rights. So they've got a video uh, that they also shared with us for publication. But the three takeaways in the video are that the killings, kidnappings, and sexual violence by criminal groups in and around Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, have increased dramatically since the start of this year, which is 2023. The second. Uh, key point is that the Haitian government has failed to protect people from the violence of criminal groups, uh, many of which have alleged ties with senior political officials, economic actors, and police officers. The third takeaway is that international security support may be required, but it will most likely only be effective with a new transitional government and as part of a multifaceted response with, law, with strong human rights safeguards. So this is what the video is all about. And we are going to share the video with you, which uh, documents part of the things that are included in the 98-page report from uh, Human Rights Watch, which is titled Living a Nightmare, Haishi Needs, Haiti Needs an Ancient Rights-Based Response to Escalating Crisis. I will quote, I will take that again. The 98-page report is titled Living in a night, living a nightmare. Haiti needs an urgent rights-based response to escalating crisis. So, please kindly watch this video that we share with you from Human Rights Watch. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it. From above, Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, seems like a peaceful city on the Caribbean Sea, but on the ground. Most of the metropolitan area is controlled by around 150 criminal groups, which the government has failed to stop. Their members terrorize the population through kidnapping, murder, sexual violence, looting, and burning down homes. According to the United Nations, criminal groups killed over 2,000 people and kidnapped more than 1,000 others during the first half of 2023. Almost 200,000 people have fled their homes since 2022 due to violence. Many lack access to adequate food, water, shelter, education, health care, and other basic services. So how did the situation get so bad, especially in Cité Soleil commune, where residents face violence when going about their daily lives? C'est une zone qui a longtemps longtemps été abandonnée par les autorités pays d'actifs parce que, en fait, par exemple, Cité Asile Soleil, il y a pas un commissariat euh, fonctionnel, il n'y a pas un tribunal BP, il n'y a pas même un bureau de l'Office de l'État civil. Donc, la population de ce soleil de toute cette commune est pratiquement une population liée à elle-même. Justement, en raison de l'absence des autorités étatiques, les grandes armées s'organisent mieux. Lorsque Cité Soleil est en guerre, de manière générale, pour les hommes qui sont capturés, ils sont exécutés. De manière générale, toutes les femmes qui sont capturées, elles sont violées. Et elles sont violées de manière collective. Impunity reigns as the authorities often fail to act against the criminal groups, some of which are allegedly backed by members of the political, economic, and security elite. Much of the worst violence happens in the communes of Cité Soleil, Cabaret, Croix des Bouquets, and Port-au-Prince. G9 is the deadliest criminal group operating in Cité Soleil and other areas of Port-au-Prince. Its leader is former police officer Jimmy Cherizier. Genus' main rival is GPEP, led by Jean-Pierre Gabriel, which controls an area in Cité Soleil called Brooklyn. People in Brooklyn have had limited access to drinking water, 
electricity, healthcare, education, and food for months due to criminal violence and government inaction. Many live on a garbage heap and in mud, as much of the city's sewage flows into the area through canals. Genève members have besieged and attacked Brooklyn's roughly 100,000 residents in their attempt to gain control of all of Cité Soleil. Many victims of the violence have been treated in hospitals outside of Cité Soleil. Gunshot wounds are the most common injuries that medical staff treat. This teenage girl is visiting her 10-year-old sister, who was shot by a criminal group at a place called Cafo La Mort, or Block of Death. The fate of their mother was even worse. But then we need to need fun for the play. Paley may give you a percentage as a number. Make me leave us. Because there are studies to give body to you see. It's just that from body to you. If you've done this, so if that is met, you'd be like, that doesn't make to do with like funny and similar and done. And then my aunt. So then my aunt leave. It was the name to look at that and by studies and even people who are trying to improve the situation face risk, as this man found out. Given the government's inaction, some Haitians have decided to take justice into their own hands. Since late April 2023, the newly formed Wakali movement has reportedly killed more than 200 suspected criminal group members across the country, further escalating a violent and dangerous situation. The violence has spread beyond the capital to northern agricultural regions threatening the country's food supply. We've seen farmland being fought over. We've seen trucks uh, with food being uh, pillaged. We've seen humanitarian warehouses be looted. And therefore, food is an essential component to this conflict. The UN estimates that most of Haiti's population are acutely food insecure. Haiti is now one of the countries in the world with communities most at risk of starvation. Haiti is led by Prime Minister Ariel Henry, who was not elected. Many Haitians consider him illegitimate and corrupt. In late 2022, he called on the international community to deploy a specialized armed force to assist Haiti. The U.S. and the U.N. supported this call. Many Haitian civil society organizations agree that Haiti urgently needs a transitional government and a rights-based international force. It would help to overcome the security crisis and support good governance so long as it includes controls to avoid the serious abuses and harm caused by past international interventions. Je voudrais être deux moments bien à la communauté internationale d'arrêter de s'y tenir des prédateurs de droits humains. Aujourd'hui, nous avons à la tête du pays des prédateurs de droits humains. Il n'aurait pas été, la situation n'aurait pas été celle qu'elle est aujourd'hui si justement ceux qui dirigent le pays n'aurait pas accepté justement qu'elle soit comme ça. La situation n'aurait pas été celle si les autorités étatiques ne fournissaient pas protection hommes et de leurs gens aux bandits armés. Donc ce sont des prédateurs des droits humains. Arrêtez de les supporter. Arrêtez de travailler avec eux. Apprenez, apprenez à écouter les citoyens et les citoyennes qui sont là et qui ont aussi de très bonnes idées pour sortir Haïti du marasme.